Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Tabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. And we give you guys a first perspective on things and how we see them. And today we got a very interesting show for you guys. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe uh, to the channel. Now, this is the show that, if I'm going to be honest with you, totally caught me off guard. And I'll tell you why. As you guys know, LeBron and J.J. Reddick have a new podcast called uh, Mind the Game with LeBron James and J.J. Reddick. It's doing very well, getting a lot of views, as one would surmise, because, well, hell, it's LeBron James. And, you know, and obviously he's going to get a lot of views because it's LeBron. The biggest name in uh, the biggest name in basketball right and right now in terms of an active uh, NBA player. So the podcast is doing well. I, I'm, if I'm if I'm honest with you, I haven't caught many episodes. I actually haven't really caught anything since that first uh, the show that they were released, but apparently um, they did it in a, a, a second show, and I saw snippets of it. Uh, and in this particular clip, they were talking about the Miami Heat. To be specific, they were discussing the 2011 Miami Heat um, and how they were not able to <clears throat> close the deal that year. The team that had Udonis Haslam, uh, Chris Bosh, Eddie House, Dwayne Wade. Um, I think Mike Bibby was on the roster. Of course, you had Mario Chalmers. You had uh, Adrenus Ilgowskis. You had other, a bunch of players. So they were talking about it, and then it got to the point where essentially LeBron was basically saying, you know, we didn't have the proper roster, uh, the roster with the right complementary players. And then he got into the point where he's like, you know, we got to the finals. We didn't play well. I played like bleep, you know, blah, 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 blah. And if I'm being 100% honest with you, I didn't think much of it. So what happened It was later in the evening yesterday, I came across a clip from Stephen A. Smith, the Stephen A. Smith show. Um, and, it, and in the title of the clip, he had a very, very strong headline. He was like, LeBron James gets called out or Stephen A. Smith calls calls out LeBron James for, for basically saying bull, you know what? And I was like, really? So I click on the clip to basically see why he was saying that. And essentially what was happening was Stephen A. Smith was reacting to the clip I just mentioned to you guys. And basically he got very uh, angry with LeBron because apparently he took it as LeBron was basically taking the responsibility off of himself by saying that we didn't have the right players when instead he should have said, I was the number one reason that we lost. So for those of you who didn't hear what Stephen A. Smith said, that's what we want to focus on. But before we even get into his comments, this video is brought to you by our sponsor, Prize Pick, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Prize Picks is really simple. Instead of just selecting a team, you just select two or more players, pick more or less their projected stats, and then you place your entry. For example, this week, I'm selecting two entries. Stephen Curry for more than 25 points, and then I got Anthony Davis for more than two blocks, and Damian Lillard for more for more than four three-pointers made. Price Picks is also the only daily sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So for example, if you have a player who gets injured in the first half and doesn't return to the second half, that player gets automatically rebooted. What I also love about Price Picks is that it offers weekly promotions like Taco Tuesdays. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit matchup up to $100. That's go to pricepick.com slash CLNS, use code CLNS for a first deposit match to, of up to $100. And once again, once you support this sponsor, you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So what we want to do is want to play exactly what Stephen A. Smith had to say yesterday about LeBron James. Uh, and then we're going to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what Stephen A. Smith had to say here. Let me get this out of the way. It's pretty damn good. I give both of them mad credit for it. We should all watch it. We want to hear about the subject of basketball. Those are two brothers worth listening to, no doubt about it. But that doesn't mean that occasionally LeBron don't get on my damn nerves or he won't get on my damn nerves. Because he said something this week that caught my attention about his early years with the Miami Heat, meaning year one in Miami, and talking about filling out that roster around him with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Before I even go any further with my opinion, which I will openly confess pissed me off, take a listen to this clip, please, courtesy of 342 Productions and Uninterrupted. Check this out. My first year in Miami, 
yeah, we had a big three. And everyone said it's a super team, super team and super team net. But we had to build our team around all minimum guys, which was still okay, but we didn't fill out the complimentary guys enough. Yeah, we had Rio, we had Udonis, you know, but we didn't, we didn't have enough as far as enough complimentary guys to actually make it all work. And we still made it to the finals. We still made it to the finals and we still probably should have won the finals, but I still give credit. You listen, it is what it is. You, you win and you lose and we lost. There's no doubt and good. And they hit it. They hit a stride at the right time. Dirk was unbelievable. Um, but my second year, we was able to grab some complimentary players and role players that really just, I'm talking about super superstars in their roles. LeBron James. That is some straight. You got to be kidding me. I know that you didn't just say that with the cameras rolling. Somebody got to say it, so I'm going to say it. Now, let's get this out of the way right now. Put up the roster that LeBron is alluding to. LeBron is telling the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Joel Anthony, Carlos Arroyo, Mike Bibby, Mario Chalmers. By the way, Mario Chalmers could play. Eric Dampier, Udonis Haslam. Udonis Haslam was young, a young girl considerably at that particular moment in time. He wasn't some has-been, okay? Eddie House could shoot. Jawan Howard, Zadrunas Ogorskis, James Jones, Jamal Maglio, Mike Miller, Dexter Pittman. I don't know why Jerry Stackhouse was on there. He's only there for a month. He wasn't on the roster in the NBA Finals. LeBron, you want to make the argument about your roster. I totally understand. But you see, this is why I respect the man. I revere the man. He's number two on the Mount Rushmore all time. He ain't the GOAT. This is the reason why. I hope you're listening, Shay Shay. I hope you're listening, Shannon Sharp, who likes to call LeBron James GOAT James. Oh, I want to see what your response is to that sound. Because let me tell you something right now, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you a taste of history. That roster that LeBron James is alluding to, he makes valid points. He's not wrong about the roster. My point is, what the hell does that have to do with you, LeBron? What does that have to do with you? Now, why would Stephen A. ask such a question? Albeit rhetorically, here's why. Ladies and gentlemen, if you remember, in 2011, LeBron James and the Miami Heat, with that roster, were up 2-1 on the Dallas Mavericks before lo losing three straight. Do you know that LeBron James in game four scored zero points in the fourth quarter? Do you know that in game five, LeBron James scored two points in the fourth quarter? Do you know that in that game four, LeBron James had eight points? Eight! For a career 27-point-per-game scorer. For a dude that's approaching age 40 and averaging damn near 25. That LeBron James, eight points in an entire game four of an NBA Finals. 17 in game five, but only two points in the fourth quarter. And in game six, he had 21. Significantly and precipitously lower than his average. This wasn't about the roster. You didn't lose to the Miami Heat because of your roster. You lost to the Miami Heat because of you. Because you weren't who you are. The LeBron James that ultimately learned to become a champion. The LeBron James whose resume elevated and changed forevermore. Who showed us that he could be a champion. Who reminded us again by winning back-to-back -back championships. Who ultimately, years later, overcame a 3-1 deficit and beat the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. You weren't that dude in 2011. I don't give a damn about no roster. You had D. Wade. You had Chris Bosh. You had the Haslams and the Eddie Houses and the Mike Millers of the world. You had a 2-1 lead in the NBA Finals and guarded by everybody from Jason Kidd to Deshaun Stevenson to J.J. Barea to Jason Terry. There was an APB out for you in the fourth quarter. That was not about your roster. That was about you. Period. There's no way around that. 
I don't care about the roster. The roster didn't stop you from averaging over 25 throughout the season. The roster didn't stop you from getting to the finals. The roster didn't stop you from being up 2-1 in the finals. Even when Bert Dirk Nowitzki was scoring points. What stopped you was that you were nowhere to be found in the fourth quarter. So you heard what Stephen A. Smith had to say there. Let me be honest with you guys. I was caught off guard by Stephen A. Smith's reaction. Um, the reason I was caught off guard is probably because I wasn't thinking about it that way. I really wasn't. Now, some people were. Some people were like, oh, this is LeBron making excuses. I wasn't thinking about it that way. And I did hear that LeBron say, I, I did hear LeBron say, and the way I played was like bleep and it was um, absolutely inexcusable. But I think that what Stephen A. Smith was upset about was the fact that He's saying, LeBron, you had enough to go up 2-1 in the NBA Finals. So in a moment like this, yes, your commentary may be true about the roster not being perfected, but that's still not the reason you lost in the NBA Finals. He said the primary reason why the Miami Heat lost in the Finals was because of him. Now, if we go over LeBron's stats in the Finals, he averaged the following that year. This is prime LeBron, 17.8 points per game, 7.2 rebounds on 6.8 assists. Um, game one, he scored 24 points, nine rebounds, five assists, one steal on 56% shooting, 80% from the three. That's a good game. Game two, he scored 20 uh, with four assists, four steals, and he shot 53% from the field and 28.6% uh, from the three. Game three is when things started to go downhill. Game three, he scored 17 points. And I think he's correct in every one of those fourth quarters where he basically didn't score, didn't attempt any shots. And he shot 43% uh, from the field and 25% from the three. What's important to point out is he only attempted 14 field goal attempts. In game four, he scored eight points with nine rebounds, seven assists, and two steals while shooting three of 11, 27% from the field and going 0% from three. Game five, he shot. He scored 17. He got a triple-double with 42% shooting. And in game six, he scored 21 points on 60% shooting and 40% from the field. So that wasn't LeBron's best series. And that's the series that I believe that for a lot of MJ people or people that want to talk about the GOAT, it ended there with them. The reason I believe it ended there with them is because you, they're like, you cannot point to a series where Jordan collapsed like that. Uh, and because you can't, they can't take you seriously when you're having a conversation uh, uh, like this. Now, in terms of Stephen A. Smith's reaction, I was very, very surprised because I think that I didn't care as much as he did. Like, he really, really cared uh, that LeBron had that to say, and I think he's viewing it uh, as an excuse. Listen, um, the fact of the matter is LeBron fans are not going to acknowledge that or they're just going to acknowledge it and kind of brush it off uh, and kind of move on to the next thing. Um, in terms of Stephen A. Smith, hey, it's his right to react. He did say that he's going to be holding LeBron James honest uh, with his podcast. What would be interesting, however, <clears throat> would, to, would be to hear LeBron respond to what Stephen A. Smith had to say. I personally think that's more interesting than maybe some of the other things that they're discussing. But LeBron may say, hey, listen, uh, I want to stay above the fray. Maybe they may talk about it on ESPN First Take. Who knows? Uh, who knows? But um, I was very surprised to hear him take that position. But anyway, these are just my thoughts. So what I want to know from you guys, what do you think about Stephen A. Smith's position? Do you think it was fair, unfair, whatever you guys think? Leave your thoughts in the comments and we catch you on the next show.